It would appear that Julia Garner is taking over Netflix one show at a time. Over the last five years, the actress has received critical acclaim for her role as Ruth Langmore on Netflix's hit series Ozark, and more recently, she's also the star of Inventing Anna as the title character herself, Anna Sorokin. While it seems to be only the beginning of Julia's acting career, she's been working in the entertainment industry for quite some time already. Well, if you want to learn more about the story and lifestyle of Julia Garner, then stay tuned because we'll get into all of that and more here for you on Famous Life. Julia Garner was born on February 1st, 1994 in Riverdale, New York, a neighborhood of the Bronx, to mother Tammy Gingold and father Thomas Garner. She also has an older sister, Anna Garner. Julia was the second child of creative, cultured parents. Her mom is a therapist who also had a successful career as an actress and comedian in her native country, Israel, where her dad is a painter and art teacher hailing from Shaker Heights, Ohio. Julia is Jewish like her mother. She has described herself as half Israeli and has relatives on her mother's side of the family living in Israel who they visit often. And Julia also understands Hebrew thanks to her mom speaking it around the home, but she isn't fluent in the language herself. As a child growing up in Riverdale, Julia said she also watched a lot of classic movies, explaining, I used to watch with my parents who are big movie fans. She watched and loved All About Eve when she was just nine years old and Rosemary's Baby when she was 11. Julia continued, and then I was 12, Netflix started with the DVDs that they would send to you, and I remember watching Taxi Driver for the first time on my laptop in bed. Julia describes her childhood as like a Noah Baumbach film, clearly very specific, and that she lived in a full-on New York Jewish household with books, rugs, paintings, and other signature details. Julia attended Eagle Hill School in Greenwich, Connecticut and began taking acting classes at age 14 to overcome her shyness. She said, I took acting classes for a hobby because I was very shy. I was 15 and I wanted to keep myself busy. I really liked how it felt. Although Julia did star in some school productions before officially diving into acting. While Julia explains her parents were very academic, she wasn't a fan of school herself. She reportedly hated school and claimed that she was the worst student, also stating it was a challenge for her. In fact, she struggled with a severe learning disability that made it difficult for her to read. She said, I couldn't put the words together. There was one point where they thought I was letter blind. As a result, her future seemed uncertain. While Julia did eventually learn to read, reading is still not easy for her and she doesn't take it for granted. If it weren't for those insecurities though, Julia may not have set out on her current path for acting. She explains, I started acting because I had such confidence issues because I wasn't literate and couldn't articulate myself in the way I wanted to. Soon, Julia was auditioning for student films at Columbia's film school, but since she was still a minor, her older sister would take her. Julia also taught herself how to memorize lines. At Columbia is where Julia also ended up making an important connection. One of the student filmmakers' girlfriends was Susan Shopmaker, who worked at a casting office and would go on to cast numerous independent films like Party Monster. At the time, Susan was helping cast the American version of the teen drama Skins, and in late 2010, there was an open call posted on Facebook. Julia attended along with 1,500 other hopeful kids there to audition. While it finally came down to Julia and one other girl out of all these individuals, she didn't end up landing the role. However, a short five months later when Susan was casting the film Martha, Marcy, May, Marlene, Julia ended up scoring her first real part. This was Julia's film debut when she was only 17 years old, playing the role of Sarah in the film. Then, in 2012, director David Chase invited her to play a small role he wrote specifically for her in his film Not Fade Away. Julia's first starring role was in the 2012 movie Electric Children, and then in 2013, she scored some more gigs, acting alongside Ashley Bell in the horror movie The Last Exorcism Part 2 and the American remake of the Mexican film We Are What We Are. Julia considers Italian actress Monica Vitti and Betty Davis as major influences on her acting style, citing Davis's role in the 1962 film Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Julia said, The thing I liked most about acting is that I was saying someone else's words, but it was my emotions. I could just say it through someone else. Acting gave her language, a mean of communication, and she also liked the feeling of forgetting herself. In 2014, Julia co-starred in Sin City, A Dame to Kill For as a new character, Marcy, a young stripper who crosses paths with another new character played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, which was also the first time she acted on a green screen. 
A year later, Garner starred in the comedy film Grandma alongside Lily Tomlin, where Julia played a teenage student eliciting the help of her lesbian poet grandmother for an abortion. Despite her active filming schedule, Julia also managed to graduate with a degree in psychology from Indiana University in 2015. In her decade or so of acting, Julia has already scored a variety of unique and amazing roles. She said herself she wasn't going to be cast as the young girl typical love interest roles, but she was okay with it. She explained, Not that I'm ugly, but I'm not Hollywood standard beautiful or that simple. I was kind of weird looking, different looking, especially at 16. I had weird curly hair and I had a gap tooth. I still have my gap tooth. I still look the same. So I get cult members. I get pregnant Mormon girls. I get cannibals. I got a girl who was in love with a KGB secret agent who wore weird glasses. And even now, I've got Ruth. After graduating, Julie was cast in the series The Americans as Kimberly Breland, the daughter of a CIA boss who's recruited by Philip, played by Matthew Reese. She was featured in a recurring role from season 3 through the end of the series until it wrapped in 2018. And then, of course, in 2017, Julia starred as Ruth Langmore in the Netflix crime drama series Ozark, opposite Jason Bateman and Laura Linney, which has got to be her most famous role yet. Let's not forget around the same time, Julia also appeared on a couple of other series. In 2018, she was in the Netflix miniseries Maniac as Ellie, the sister of Emma Stone's character, and played Tara Newell on the Bravo true crime anthology series Dirty John from 2018 until 2019, starring as the daughter of Connie Britton's character. Well, it appears that Julia's role as Ruth on Ozark was the one that especially blew her up to fame status and critical acclaim, not to mention she would go on to win two consecutive primetime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama Series. Well, Julia deserved it to say the least. The actress went the extra mile when prepping to play Ruth on the show, and as a Bronx native herself, she had to prepare a Missouri accent for audition sound more like the character. After scoring the part, Garner went full on method actor and spent a whole month talking like the character. She told IndieWire, I wanted to sound authentic so a month before doing Ozark, I would only speak in the accent. I would walk around everywhere using the accent, I'd order my food with the accent. You kind of get a sense of the character that way. From Ruth's start as a backwoods scam artist in season one of the show, she progressed through many changes, becoming closer to the Beard family as well and Julia's character, Ruth, always seemed to feel the back and forth pull between her alliance to Marty and Wendy Bird and the pull from her roots with her fellow Langmores and locals like Darlene. While Ozark has seemingly come to an end with its fourth and final season, this isn't the last we'll see of Julia on the streaming platform. She also stars in the recent Netflix miniseries Inventing Anna, playing the title role of Russian-born German fraudster Anna sorokin Delvey, created and produced by Shonda Rhimes which premiered in February 2022. It's based on the true story and New York article about Anna who pretended to be a wealthy German heiress and tricked many people. Speaking about this role, Julia said it was the hardest accent she ever had to learn. But Shonda Rhimes explained why Julia was perfect for the role. Anna Delvey is a person who goes through many transformations to reach her goals. Given Julia's range, we knew it was something she could deliver on. Not to mention, Julie revealed that she actually went to meet the real-life Anna for her role before portraying her on the show, visiting her at Albion Correctional Facility in New York, and claimed Anna was quote-unquote really sweet. Over the years, Julie has also appeared on the 2019 Amazon anthology series Modern Love in the first season, as well as an independent drama film The Assistant that same year. The film addressed the current culture surrounding the Me Too movement, and Garner received acclaim for her performance, as well as an independent Spirit Award nomination. In terms of Julia's private life when she's not busy on screen, she married singer Mark Foster of the group Foster the People in a December 2019 ceremony at New York City Hall. The couple met at the Sundance Film Festival and after 10 months of dating, got engaged. As for what's coming next for Julia Garner in 2022, she was cast in the thriller film Apartment 7A, directed by Natalie Erica James and is set to star in The Royal Hotel, directed by Kitty Green. There have also been persistent rumors that Julia may have been cast as a young Madonna in a biopic of the singer, and while the actress denies it, rumors continue. Well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But either way, I think we'll be seeing much more of Julia both on Netflix and on the big screen. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Famous Life and leave a comment for who you'd like us to feature next.